Good morning, guys. Welcome to FYI. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We trust that you guys are well. Happy, happy, happy Thursday. It is Thursday, the second day of February. Already we're in a month of love. Is it February or June? But happy to have you here nonetheless. Each and every one of you, wherever you guys are joining us from, we're happy to have you. Landon Thomas with us this morning and Annette Cummins. How are you beautiful ladies doing? Great to have you here with us. Not forgetting Dolly Anderson is here too. And all the other guys who are joining us. We're gonna give you guys a second or two to share the live. You know how we do it, folks, on this uh, February 2nd. Smash that emoji button as well. I see Annette is saying good morning to a host of persons. Good morning to the host, Yolanda, Gwyneth, Chevron, Sheila, Boychild, Donnie, uh, Dolly, Beatrice, Isabella. <laughs> good morning to everyone. Guys, it's great to have you here with us. We're going to ensure that we share to all the, uh, the credible places, all the valid places. And then we're going to be hitting it off with you guys. We're happy that you folks are here. Well, you guys are joining us on Twitter. You're joining us on YouTube. You're joining us on Facebook, Facebook, wherever you're joining us from this morning. We're happy, happy, happy that you folks are here with us. Folks, I squeezed my hands last night in the car door. My God. For the first time in my life, I understood what the term Ning Ning means. Yeah. <laughs> Very first time in my life. You know, people say, you see Ning Ning? Well, I understood that firsthand for the very first time. What does Ning Ning, <laughs> what does it mean? I can tell you all. a good day. I shall tell you all a good day, folks, what Ning Ning means. Yeah, yeah, like the colors of the rainbow and all the stars put together. We're well, great to see each and every one of you. Wherever you're joining us from, folks, whichever page you're joining us from, we're super happy that you guys are here. Let's be happy, 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 happy that you folks are here with us. It's raining. In the national capital city where we are how's the weather where you folks are it's raining cats and dogs where we are in a national capital city we got a couple things to share with you beautiful folks and we're so happy that you guys are here with us good to see each and every one of you i know some of some of the folks are now joining the live like vashti magnot and edward brooms uh volme wilson and uh some some of the other guys now coming on great to see you vincent granada so I, I i squeezed my thumb in the car door last night and i saw ning ning folks i kid you i kid you not forgive us if the um if we look a little different this morning we have to switch um we have to switch what uh, networks and so we i don't think we we and well it has good good capacity to do live stream but you will forgive us folks you will forgive us great to see each and every one of you guys uh, happy that you guys are joining us I see Paul May is here, Paul May Wilson, Yolanda Thomas, Michael Blyden is here as well, and Romel Gonzalez, Patricia Craig, Julian Mars is here too. Great to have you, Julian, and all those other beautiful folks who are joining us wherever, wherever you are joining us from. Really excited to get into what's happening, uh, folks, in the morning papers. Uh, pretty much excited to get to that, and we trust that you guys are still with us, folks, for the next uh, 45 minutes or so as we walk through some of the things that are happening um, uh, currently where we are and perhaps even where you guys are this morning. I know we always say uh, share the live and expose the truth. Share the live, expose the truth. Uh, good folks, that's what it's all about. Share the live, expose the truth. Wherever you all are coming in from this morning, that is our encouragement to you. I know as we begin, as we begin, as we, as we warm up, as you guys come on, we want to encourage you. If you need, if you need good legal services, you need a justice of the peace, you need a commissioner of votes to affidavit. We want to encourage you. Uh, so let's be trying to be the Alistair Collins from down there at the Callion Mall. The Alistair Collins from folks, they're going to give you good guidance. Here are some of the other services that they offer. If you are looking to have your statutory declarations done, affidavit of income, affidavit of identity, or guidance for placing your damaged or lost passport, or lost license, you need the Alistair Collins firm. They can also help you with tenancy agreements, agreements of settlement, your power of attorney, your last will and testament, and certification of documents. The Alistair Collins firm is located at the calendar at 162 Lamar Street in Georgetown between Camp and Waterloo Street. Alistair Collins is a commissioner of votes to affidavits and a justice of the peace. You can also call them at 649-6410 or 685-6446 or 503 the Alistair Collins firm, helping you need it. 
for all your legal document needs and more. The Alistair Collins firm is the place for you. If you are looking to have your statutory declarations done, affidavit of income, affidavit of identity, or guidance replacing your damaged or lost passport, or lost license, you need the Alistair Collins firm. They can also help you with tenancy agreements, agreements of settlement, your power of attorney, your last will and testament, and certification of documents. The Alistair Collins firm is located at the Calendar Mall, 162 Lamont Street in Georgetown between Camp and Waterloo Streets. Alistair Collins is a commissioner of votes to affidavits and a justice of the peace. You can also call them at 649-6410 or 685-6446 or 503-145. The Alistair Collins firm, help when you need it. For all... Yep, yep, good to have you guys back. Welcome back. Again, again, if you need good legal advice, you need good legal services, the Alistair Collins firm, then I'll be the one for you. Go. We've got a number of things happening number of things happening in the morning papers this morning a lot of things making the headlines as well we pulled out a couple that you guys might find interesting uh, just a couple of them that you folks just might just might just might find some interesting well great to have you here i see asif hussein and donna joseph is here with us beatrice selby is here with us as well great to see you beatrice uh, will felix is here too uh, good morning guys and i see nigel kingston is here with us as well. Great to see you, Nigel. Uh, great to see Donna, Joseph, and uh, Beatrice, as I said, and all the other guys who are joining us. And we know some of you are going to be low-key this morning at the back. Low-key this morning. But we're happy, nonetheless, that you folks are here with us. And we want to get right to some of the things that are making the headlines. Good folks. Right to some of those things making the headlines. And here's, here's, here's one of them. Here's one that we think you guys ought to know about. And they're telling us that uh, the city hall restoration project is on track to be completed at year end and i'm i'm very happy and I, I think whichever government if the government of the day should take care of places like city hall you know these um, national sites national monuments uh, places of historic value like city hall and i know that this project has been a long time uh, coming uh, since i sat as deputy mayor of the municipality of Joshang. Uh, this project started the consultation and, and, and all of that. We met with the consultant who, um, you know, did the, some of the blueprint work uh, for the renovation and, and all of that. And I'm, I'm very happy to see that it's gonna come, um, it's gonna come to a completion shortly. And that's one of the headlines that we're following. It's gonna come to a completion shortly. And they say by December, by December, happy to see that happening. City Hall is a beautiful building. It's a beautiful, beautiful building. I know part of the trouble that we have, uh, Sa Sasha Trim and Renella Garnet. I don't think we, we appreciate um, not only the country we have, but the city we have. We have quite a beautiful city, you know. I'm very sad that, you know, the politics sometimes permeates everything and, and you know, gives it a very uh, rancid um, kind, of, kind of flavor and taste. But we have a beautiful, beautiful city. If you go and use, uh, take a good look at some of the architectural design of our uh, colonial heritage, whether it's the Dutch, the British, or whoever else had me for whatever period of time, you know, the impact on our architecture and, you know, the layout of the city is pretty amazing. So again, I'm, I'm very, very happy. Very, very, very happy to know that this project here, this project is going to come to a completion uh, shortly. Here's another one of the headlines that we're following at our end. What about this one? Uh, do we have it? What about this headline, folks? Um, and this is what they're telling us here. You know, and uh, uh, did, did, did we get it? Yeah, COVID-19 pandemic. The World Health Organization is telling us uh, it's probably at a transition point. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. Um, and even though it's at a transition point, we hasten to say that the warnings are still that person should be taking every precaution necessary to safeguard yourself. And, uh, you know, uh, this is part of what um, the reporting is telling us this morning, as reported by the World Health Organization and its Director General, Tedros Ghebreyesus. You know, doing a pretty fantastic job, you know, doing a, a pretty fantastic job. But uh, Tedros Ghebreyesus saying that we seem to be coming to this point in this, this transition point in this pandemic and he went on to say that it's a international health regulations emergency committee met on friday last to analyze the data on the state of the pandemic and uh, mr gibriel says uh, or rather acknowledged that the committee views uh, that the COVID 19 pandemic probably is at a transition point and appreciates the uh, the advice of that committee 
um, as they begin to navigate carefully and mitigate potential negative consequences. And you know, there's this whole concept of what's called long COVID, you know, aspect and symptoms of COVID will be here with us for some time into the future. And that we have to keep uh, mitigating uh, those effects um, of long COVID. Um, the statement that they put out here, the World Health Organization, that is, went on to say uh, that um, there is still a high risk of COVID-19 global transmission, a very high risk, folks, high, high risk of COVID-19 global trans transmission, which means that the virus is still classified as a public health emergency of international concern. And you, you and I would do well to hear that. You and I would do well to hear that and conduct ourselves accordingly. I'm not like COVID don't even exist at all. And that's how some of us chuckle in, as though COVID don't even exist at all. But we're happy for you all. <laughs> Can't say we happy for you all. We happy for you all. That's how you want to conduct yourself. Uh, folks, here's, a, here's another headline that we're following. And so, folks, please continue to social distance. Continue to uh, wear uh, all of your um, masks and so forth. Social distance uh, where you have to. And conduct yourselves properly. Conduct yourselves properly. Please and thank you. Conduct yourself properly. See some folks now joining us. And sing in Gloria Garden. Edward Blooms, we see you there. Edward and Evangelist Augustus Andrews, great to see you here with us. Tessa Isaac Scribs Andy is here with us as well. So, folks, all of you, let me conduct yourself like big people, right? Social distance, wear your mask, sanitize, and all those other things. Here's another headline that we're following at your end, folks. I think you all know about the new director of uh, PAHO, the Pan American Health Organization. Uh, says that again following up on what we just discussed there ending the COVID pandemic and building resilience is part of his um, key priorities part of his key priorities and uh, Dr. Barbosa is taking over from uh, Dr. Carissa Etienne and he says that this is the um, what he's concerned about ending the COVID-19 uh, pandemic in a very very responsible um, manner yeah I, I agree with that I agree with that we must build resilience Right? And that's what we're talking about, um, what they describe as long COVID. Uh, Jarbus Barbosa is the new head of the Pan American Health Organization, as I said, taking over from his predecessor, Dr. Chrissy Etienne, who really and truly did a lot with PAHO to steer us through the pandemic uh, from the beginning to what they're saying now. Um, it looks like the end of COVID. Looks, looks, looks. Right? And of course, um, he took over from the 1st of February. He went on to say that countries, let me just read a piece of it for you, countries of the Americas face a complex epistemological uh, landscape, epidemiological landscape rather, with the stubborn persistence, he said, of communicable diseases, the risk of outbreaks of pandemics, the rise of non-communicable diseases as well, the damage caused by uh, traffic accidents, my God, and violence, he's talking about us here now, and the impacts of climate change. Yep. All that, all that we face on a daily basis, folks. All of that we face on a daily basis. Guys, what are your recommendations for this thumb, thumb of mine? It is paining like you will not believe. Paining, good folks, like you will not believe. So, again, uh, we're Dr. Uh, Jabez Barbosa, the new uh, director of the Pan American Health Organization, is concerned. Uh, telling us again, there is this stubborn persistence, he says. Right? of communicable diseases and non-communicable diseases. That's the era in which we live. Right? And this epidemiological landscape, right? like all of these complexity and challenges, but we've got to wait through them. And that's why we're encouraging you guys to continue, continue with the protocols, even if it's not full-fledged um, in, in what, what do you call it, um, being enforced where you are still for your own safety that of your friends family and loved ones and we want to say congrats to dr jarvis barbosa in this new post of a director general head of the Pan american health organization congrats to dr barbosa i know dr Kurtzer, etienne definitely left big shoes to be filled yep 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 big shoes to be filled that being said folks another one of the headlines that we're following are we tracking this one take a look at this one Take a look at this one and that we saw in uh, some of the morning papers. Making the morning papers, folks, uh, where, where we are. So let us see the editor that we saw and we said, yes, you know, there's this, um, there's this posture, put it that way, you know, to 
make me live as though all things are going well, everything nice and nobody got no problems, nobody got no troubles. But when you look at the thing deeper, when you examine local situations deeper, then you realize, you know what? Right? Nothing irregular. Nothing irregular. And here this letter right is talking about something as basic as tetanus vaccines, injections, not available at the health centers. Here's this gentleman who wanted to help a woman who was bitten by a dog, bitten on her hand by a German Shepherd dog. Bitten on her hand by a German Shepherd. He said he went to a health center. Right? Nothing undoing there. Went to Georgetown Hospital. Same thing. Same thing. Could you imagine that? I know, you know, acutely that you folks who work in the diaspora when you all come home, you are stunned how we manage to stay alive in the healthcare system that we have. And I've been talking to a number of you recently, absolutely stunned. You know, by the level of healthcare that we have descended into. And here is this letter writer saying something as basic as tetanus. We don't have an injection for, but hoping, right? He was hoping that the caring Ali government corrects this. Something as basic as tetanus injections, we don't have. Can you believe that? Folks, how things when you all encounter some of the health services as you are in? How are things at that end? All right. Anybody have any recommendations on how do I deal with this swollen, paining finger that I squeezed in the cardio last night? Pray tell, pray tell. Loretta Roberts, we see you there, and Pratia Phillips. Out front parts, good morning to you and all the other folks who are joining us. Folks, these are just some of the headlines. There's a couple of the headlines that we are tracking at this end. We try to, something as basic as stuck with us. Yeah. You know, people will be shocked to hear some of our people die from locally. They'll be absolutely shocked to hear that. I'm certain. Very, very, very shocked. They'll be to hear, you know, these things. Very, very sharp. And so those are a couple of things, guys, that we're looking at that are making the morning papers. Just a couple of them are making the morning papers. And if you got some headlines you want to show our way, please feel free to do that, good folks. Feel free to do that. We're about to get into the things that are brewing, folks. The things that are brewing internationally and regionally and some uh, locally as well. We're going to turn our attention to some of that. A couple of the things, good folks that are brewing and we head into the international segment good folks wherever you are joining us from it's so good to see Irma Down Irma Down Cook on the live in June Cameron and all the other beautiful folks like Claire Capel how y'all doing what's up breakfast how's the weather folks it's raining 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 where we are yeah let me take a peek outside and see what's happening yeah Correct is right. Raining cats and dogs too. Not just raining. We hope you guys stay warm wherever you are. We hope the weather is kind to you. Good folks. We hope the weather is kind to you guys. And that, you know, you have a good day, generally. You have a good day, generally clear and vasty and uh, all your folks. I see I see Vashti says, put your thumb in some warm water and add some salt. Now, there's a solution. I had the warm water, but not the salt. I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that. I had the warm water. It did seem to relieve some of the tension. Um, but I'm going to definitely try some of the salt as well. All right? Yep. Winston, I see that. Winston says he walks with the basics when he's traveling. We see that, Winston. We see that. Folks, let's turn our attention quickly to some of the stuff that are happening internationally. Some of the things happening internationally. Good folks, and, you know, here's one of them. Here is one of them. Uh, one of the things happening um, internationally, we think you guys all know about. You know, it was interesting to see uh, CARICOM put out a statement quite recently on what's happening in Haiti. Well, not CARICOM, Jamaica is the most recent. Uh, Jamaica, uh, Prime Minister Andrew Holness says he has a lot of concern. And not only that, that they are ready to put boots on the ground in Haiti if there is a regional um, a force like that that's going to be set up to help out in Haiti. Haiti is a sister CARICOM country and it is spiraling out of control. The U.S. recently said 
uh, that it has uh, passed through the court system um, uh, several persons several more persons uh, rather um, linked to the assassination of haiti's last president uh, uh, uh Jovenel maurice um, and saying that it has uh, passed a number of persons through the court system and charged them too um, one person is james uh, Solages and the other person is Joseph Vincent. You have also Arian, uh, Alejandro Rivera Garcia, and then the fourth person is Christian Salmon. Uh, Christian Salmon. Uh, again, those are uh, James uh, Solages, uh, Joseph Vincent, uh, Alejandro Rivera Garcia, and Christian Salmon are the four persons that the U.S. recently um, have. Uh, Remanded, uh, charged rather, charged in um, for for um, in connection with the death of Chavonel Moise, the last president there of Haiti. Is, am I getting right? The last president of Haiti was the president after him. Uh, nonetheless, you know precisely who I am talking about. And the three men were charged with conspiring to commit murder and kidnapping outside the United States and faced life imprisonment if convicted. A fourth man, this. Um, a Christian Sanan was charged with conspiring to smuggle goods from the United States and cause export information not to be filed. Yeah. That is his that is his charge, and all are related to the assassination of the Haitian president, Jovenel Moise. And that's one of the things, folks, we are following internationally. And here's another thing we will be tracking to folks. Uh, what do you guys think about this? The Pope. The Pope is in the Congo. Right, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. The Pope is there. And one of the things the Pope is saying is, you all take your hands, greedy folks. Offer not only the Congo, the Democratic Republic, uh, formerly known as Zaire, love that name, Zaire, but saying, take your hands off African nations. Stop pillaging and plundering their resources. The Pope. The Pope seemed very fired up fired up in delivering this statement um and again he demanded that foreign uh, powers stop plundering africa's natural resources uh, for the poison of their own greed i like that the poison of their own greed you understand them you know there are a lot of them wicked stinking dirty the pope is saying stop it stop it right well some of us would see um, war and unrest and all of that in Haiti <laughs> my god you don't know what brought Haiti to where it is and that's something we got to examine in the morning on our program we got to get a whole program just just for that alone just for that alone so it's, it's, it's great rather to see the Pope um, with his moral authority you know wading into these very very um Complex nuance issues stop the exploitation of Africa and stop exploiting the people of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Yeah, that was the that was the um, that was the Pope's message. Stop doing it. Yep, yeah, very much so. Very much so, good folks. We're going to turn our attention, guys, to uh, some of what's happening regionally paying attention to some of what's happening regionally um a couple of things we think you guys ought to know about look at one of the things that we're tracking at our end with concerns things that are happening regionally good folks how are you all doing out there man i know everybody's a little down but don't let it be a damper on your spirit folks don't do it open part what happening by you all right what happened by you Sheila boy child how are you doing there uh, alan cummins i think it's on the ball and it says france France, you know, help to destroy Haiti. France is help to destroy Haiti. Watching those comments, Deborah Clark and Sasha Trim. Uh, Farouk, Hack, good to have each and every one of you. Wherever you all are joining us from, great to have you folks here with us. Share the live good folks. Smash that emoji button. And let me go down, let me go down, let me go down. Number of things, good folks, happening regionally. We think you guys all know about a number of things and here's just here's just uh, a couple of them we're going to shoot at you guys a couple of them we're going to shoot at you folks um and uh this is one 
Do we have it? English. Yeah, we do. And this is Peru. You remember the oldest president of Peru, Castillo, or Castello. Uh, you all remember that? How it happened? That political coup there, as it were, in in Peru. Well, Peru has not found its footing since then. Has not found its footing, and now the Congress um, has failed to agree on holding early election. Yeah. The Congress has failed to agree. So you got a lot of stuff happening there. A lot of stuff happening, whether in the Caribbean region or we're in South America, we're in Latin America. There's just one of them. Right? What's happening to democracy, man? Hmm? What's happening to democracy in Peru? We got to unpack. We got to unpack that. You see? One of the things I think is a teachable moment on this whole issue of Peru, Beatrice Selbin, Sheila Boy, Child, Sasha Trim, um, and Singh and all the other guys. I think one of the teachable moments here is, you know, some people want a lot of things, you know. But if you give them, you don't know if they could, they could take care of it, if they could keep it. A lot of them thought they thought they could do with ease what President Costello was doing. We can do it. And now they have the whole ship of state. And you're going down. Down, down, down. Down we go. Down, down, down we go. All right? Down, down, down. They are going in Peru. And then I think we are now in Trinidad, folks. A gruesome, brutal murder in Trinidad. A taekwondo coach lost her life overnight. And she was sitting in her car. Um, just about to disembark in the area where she has this um, gym, this taekwondo studio, uh, whatever it is. And they said a man came out of a, a vehicle and shot her up, shot into her vehicle. So it looks as though she was the intended target because her 35 year old boyfriend, who's a doctor, was also there. And the police said he ran for cover. He ran for cover. And in that process, this beautiful, lovely young lady uh, lost her life. Lost her life. You know, I think I was watching some figures recently that suggested that Trinidad has already passed um, 900 murders. Is it Trinidad or Jamaica? For the year already. All right, so quite a few things happening there, folks. Um, and again, this is just, you know, just so, so sad. Um, she is, I hope I, I, I hope I get the name correct. Soban Rogers. Soban Rogers. And again, the police is saying that they're unclear as what was the motive. But there is a theory that she may have been killed because of a recent business that she started. According to that theory, Rogers was stepping on some toes. Wow. 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 She was stepping on some toes. Good folks. That's what they're telling us. Rogers may have been stepping on some toes. And for that, you gotta lose your life. Our thoughts and prayers go to your family. Quite a quite a, a beautiful looking young lady. And everybody who made comments to the newspapers, I think we putting this out of the express, had a good word to say about her, about her spirit. Um, the way she really took the young kids under her wings to train them in Taekwondo and martial arts and so on. You know, and saying that we have lost. Um, Trinidad is going to be poorer for the death of uh, so Sohoban uh, Rogers. Yeah. Gone too soon. Our thoughts and prayers, guys. Go to friends, family, and our loved ones. Meet it, Daniel. Signs of the times. That's all we're going to say. Signs of the times. Signs of the times. Guys, we might, I might have to run off a little early to attend to this hand. It's really giving me the troubles. Deborah Clark, good to see you there. It's really giving, giving me the troubles this morning. Uh, but moving on, folks, moving on. I think we're going to touch on some of the stuff that are happening locally, folks. Some of the stuff that are happening locally. And we're so happy that you guys are here with us. A couple of things we're going to touch on happening locally. And I'm going to see if I can, um, I can do the hot water. And what's the other thing? Salt. That Vashti was recommended. The hot water and salt. Yeah. Gonna try that. So sad. 
I see Ann Singh says uh, about Sohoban Rogers and you know the gruesome way in which she died. My God, my God, the gruesome way. You telling me starting a little business could affect somebody else like that? That you would want to take somebody else's life? My God, but it's what we're coming to, folks. We're coming to. Huh? We're coming to. What is it coming to? Well, in the five nine two, I don't think we're fearing. I don't think we're fearing too much better. I don't think we're fearing too much better, folks. In the five nine two, and we're still trying to catch ourselves from some of what uh, transpired overnight there in um, in Buxton to figure out how things escalated so fast and foolishly in Buxton. How did it escalate so fast? You know, a lot to be desired. But we saw recently some folks, uh, our indigenous brothers and sisters, fighting back for their lands and what is rightfully theirs. You know, the Chief Justice had ruled the land um, belongs to them, but not to the exclusion of others. Which means the government could allow other people to go and mine on the land and all of that. That seems a little inconsistent to what we've been hearing internationally on the rights of indigenous people. It seems a little contradictory to that. To us. To us, a little contradictory. Because there's the um, these people want to enjoy their um, their cultural land, their um, ancestral lands. But they're not being allowed to do that. And again, the Chief Justice said, while well, they have a right to the land, it's not, an, it's not to the exclusion of others, and they are now going to appeal. They are now going to appeal this matter. Yeah. Just some of what's happening, guys, uh, around these parts. That's the truth. Deborah Clark, Joel Ward, great to see each and every one of you. Nicola Best, and all you other wonderful folks. Here's another headline we're following locally, folks, in the 592. We're happy to see our young people pushing on. Uh, two young persons recently were were awarded the top UG criminal constitutional law award um, and um, yeah criminal law as as one award and then constitutional law uh, uh, for another award and both students interestingly are overseas studying and so the uh, miss uh, Kim Kite John received the trophy on behalf of um, the people who were donated it presented by Chief Justice Rakshan George Wilshire presented right, presented by the acting Chief Justice right? and what I like about this is that this award or these awards um, on behalf of the late Chief Justice Ayan Chan and his love and passion for the law and these areas of the law as well and wanting to see other young people um, get um, the necessary experience and all of that. It comes with a value of, I think, $100,000 for each of the award. And no doubt the students are going to use that um, to benefit them further in the chosen vocation. Yep, in the name of Ian Chang, this award is being pre presented for constitutional law and also um, for that other area of law that it, that it looks at. Constitutional law and criminal law. Right? On behalf of uh, the the Chang family. Yep, that's one of the things making more happy. We, we, we really want to say congrats on that. It's good to see people giving back in that way and empowering in the process our young people, empowering them. Yeah, one of the things we're following. And then we told that the first lady, of course, um, has just commissioned the uh, FPSO Prosperity. I think this is the third one that we have going to be pumping out that oil, pumping out that oil. How many of us, how many of us, you know, our quality of life will improve because of the oil we pumping. We have it for the first lady, travel the globe, you know, to christen your vessels. Right. Travel the globe. We want to see this money getting to the people, trickling down to the people, Dali and June Cameron, Edward Broome, Cheryl uh, Mulrain, we want to see the money trickling down to you. Travel the globe, of course. Let the money trickle down. Let it, let it go down, folks. 
Let him on the go down. Right. Sorry, folks, my drop on a couple minutes early. They have this tremendously pain. Tremendously painting. And I think we're going to head into the big issue. Are we there? Are we there? Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Wright, folks. Dr. Letitia Wright. The South University of Ghana confer this honorary doctors of arts and letters to uh, the, 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 the Black Panther. <laughs> the Black Panther. And what a, what a woman of humility. Right? And simplicity. No, some of you are like that. Put you all under pressure now. Right? And put you all on the pressure now. Yeah. So congrats to Dr. Leticia, right? Um, and you know, she had some very, very inspiring words. In, she's an inspiring figure. She has become a, a very, very inspiring figure. She's had some very, very she's inspired, I think, thousands of her young people already. And she had some inspiring words at that special, extraordinary convocation that the University of Ghana had just yesterday. Just yesterday. Here's some of what Dr. Wright said. Two thousand and fifteen comes. I think I'm on top of the world. I think everything is worked out and planned for me, but God had other plans. He saw a young girl who, yes, I had dreams and yes, I have purpose, but he saw a young girl that could, could go into the depths of depression by chasing something that was not tangible that was not real and I wanted acting for the wrong reasons and he confronted me with this reality why do you want acting I want to be loved I want to be accepted I want to be successful and he taught me a very important lesson about the lowly seat and about humility and about purpose so he stripped it away he told me to give up acting why are you telling me to give up acting? I have two solid roles, one with Nicole Kidman, one with uh, these famous Hollywood actresses right at my feet. Why are you telling me to give it up? Because I want your heart. Because when I have your heart, it cannot be tainted by what the world has to offer and it will stay pure. So I went on this journey to find myself and find God. I went on this journey for true self-acceptance and love within my own heart, for my own self, not by what anyone will validate and tell me that I could be, but what God has told me I could be. So I went on that journey and I fell in love with God. I found peace. My mental health was improving. My joy was back. The meaning of my name, Letitia, is joy. My dad picked it. Shouts out to my dad. And as I was in my room praying, just filled with so much joy, like I finally found peace because I have a spiritual connection and I, I just feel good about my life. God comes knocking. It's time to go back to acting. Are you crazy? You just told me to leave, man. Is, is what you're doing. God, what are you doing? God said, I have your heart now and it's in a safe space. It's in a safe space where whatever you ask me to do, it's gonna come from purity, not because you need validation from them. It's because you want purpose. Every role that you pick, moving forward from this point will be filled with even more purpose and even more impact because I'm here, I dwell inside of you. And as the years went by and as God was able to use my talent, I always made it very, very known to everybody in Hollywood and every interviewer where I'm from. This is country called Guyana. No, it's not Ghana, it's Guyana. <laughs> Please. Don't confuse the two. They're both beautiful countries. I love Ghana. I just came back from there. But I really took the opportunity to highlight my country because this country is a part of where I'm from. 
This country is in my bloodline. I go home and there's pepper pot and bread. I go home, there's roti, dal roti, this is my favorite. I go home and there's Guyana in the very fabric of all that I do and, and all that I am. So in a way, I've not been home, but home has not left me. Such an awesome woman, such an awesome woman, such an awesome woman. And I think we're blessed as a country to have someone like that. Oh, they're representing us and keeping our flag flying high. Such an awesome woman. Again, I conferred with uh, doctors of arts and letters a degree, and now Dr. Letitia Wright. Uh, and and a, a really big moment for the university. A really, really big moment for, you, for the University of Ghana. My alma mater. Really, really big moment. And folks, you get a chance to go and pursue higher education yourself. Do that. Do that. University of Ghana is a fantastic place. Fantastic place. Wouldn't trade it for the world. Would not trade it for the world. I'm going to finish my master's now. <laughs> and so, congrats to Dr. Leticia Wright. Last evening, folks, last evening before uh, going to leave you guys, last evening there was a dinner in her honor at State House. There was a dinner in her honor at State House. And of course, uh, she was out there shining and inspiring. Right? And you know, I just want to say again, again, 99% um, of the things this government do, I don't agree with them. You know, but I think they got a couple of things right in celebrating Letitia Wright, celebrating her as a person, um, as a Guyanese, and her work. And her work. I don't think you just wake up one day and you meet on a big stage um, with movies like Black Panther and, you know, all of the other stuff that she's involved in. Right? But her own tireless work as an individual, you know, fighting her way forward, right, has made a difference. And, of course, her faith in God and, and uh, his son, uh, Jesus Christ, certainly has been a big part of her success, a big part of her success. And again, I see, I don't often agree with this administration, but they got a couple of things right in celebrating her. They got a couple of things right in celebrating her. Folks, you all are telling me, you all are telling me, what are you using for this hand? You all are telling me what are you using for this hand? Please, I want to know. I know you guys know. <laughs> you all know all the little matcha matcha, as we say. You all know all the little matcha matcha. Tell me what can I use for this hand. I was coming out of the vehicle last evening and just inadvertently slammed the door and my hand was calling it. My hand was calling it and my thumb, folks, is blowing like this. Like you got a mind and a heart of its own. <laughs> so I want to I wanna get some um, attention on it. And I got a big blood shot. What is it called? Blood shot under my, under my, uh, my thumbnail here. But it's good to have been here with you guys this morning. Donna McDonald, Gil Alicock, and all the other folks joining us. Remember, tomorrow morning, folks, tomorrow morning, we will not be on tomorrow. I am in court very, very early with Mayor of Georgetown, Ubrash and Ryan, on that matter. So we're not going to have the morning program. We're going to be back tomorrow night, only with the night program. Of course, uh, the National Assembly work continues. Um, and we're going to be back this evening as well uh, with the night program in the ring. All things being equal. Um, that notwithstanding, we're going to be back tomorrow night. Uh, but we're going to be off tomorrow morning because I really want to be on time for court. Least, least, they're going to lock me up. Lock me up. You know, Burton, I want for my arrest. So I want to be on time for court. So you're going to forgive me there. And Loki Howell and, or, and Orin Don Cook and uh, Tracy Adams and all the other folks. Good to have each and every one of you here with us, guys. And we want to encourage you uh, because it's a new month. It's new bills watching us, but we got some old ones as well. Uh, new month, new bills watching us, but some old ones as well. We want to encourage you guys to please party with us uh, where you can. Partner, 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 partner with us. It's going to help us in immeasurable ways. In immeasurable ways. And you all know uh, by now we've got several platforms in which folks can contribute to our program to keep us moving on. This is how we have done two plus years, folks. Two plus years. Two plus years. We have done. This is how we have done it. Two plus years. 
Uh, thanks to you, beautiful, fantastic folks. You're built by Cash App and Zell and PayPal, uh, MMG, uh, Money Grand Western Union as well. Two plus years we've been out here broadcasting and bringing you folks valid, credible information. If we could have done it on our own, we would have done so, folks. But we need your help to keep pushing forward. And we thank you guys for your love, your support, and your generosity. It means the world to us. I can't lie. It means the world to us. That's going to do it for us at this end, this morning. But good to see Nicola Bess and Ingrid King. I think we were at 8.50, if I'm correct. We're just 10 minutes off from our usual close, closing time. But allow me to run off and get a good look at this and what's happening with, with my time here. Romel Gonzalez and Ingrid King and all the other folks who are joining us. Great to see you guys. Loretta Roberts and um, I see Orin Dawn and, and all the other folks. Uh, you know, great to have you on this morning and thanks for being such a uh, good guest this morning. Thanks for being here. Uh, Margaret Nelson, good to see you. Good to see you. And all the others, I see you coming to you, Margaret. Guys in charge and deal, and all shall be well. Have a, oh my God. <laughs> there, I go beating on the table. Oh my God. I'm smiling <laughs> as against crying, folks. As against crying. Have a fantastic day, folks. And stay safe. Have a fantastic day. Stay well, guys. Respect and balance. Stay well out there.